y'all. I'm Finn Graves, and today I want to talk to you about what being an interdisciplinary artist means. Okay, so as an interdisciplinary artist, what it means for me is that I work in a variety of mediums. I've often identified as a multimedia artist, but what that actually comes down to is the fact that I write, I draw, I paint, uh, I photograph, I often video blog, all in a day. Right, so those are five things that I do frequently, all of the time. And my main focuses as an artist over the last decade have been developing my illustration style, uh, developing my mural painting style, and trying out new mediums. One of the new mediums that I'm working in right now is actually these little creatures. So what I'm doing with these is I'm trying to convey my very primitive, expressive painting style um, onto art dolls. So here's one that has no painting on it at all. And here's one that has three different materials of painting on it. So it has, yeah, it has three different types of paint on it from very cheap to super expensive. And so I'm experimenting with these guys. So as an interdisciplinary artist, it allows me to experiment. But there's some complications with being a mixed media or interdisciplinary artist in the art world. The most basic of those complications is oftentimes you're thought of, or I'm thought of, as a jack of all trades, master of none, right? And so there is that aspect. I mean, if I had been focused for the last 20 years since I was since I was 11 years old on just painting, I would be a much better painter than I am. But in reality, painting stole my obsession in 2010. And so it's 2017, and so I've been working with acrylic painting um, for the last seven years, and so I've developed my style in acrylic painting. But at the same time, I don't always feel like painting, and I don't always feel like that's the best use of my internal need to communicate, because what art is for me as a human is uh, an aspect of self-expression. The action of creation, the action of destruction, the action of experimentation all corresponds directly to how I live my life. And for me, just focusing on one type of art doesn't work because sometimes I need to use calligraphy and watercolor, which is a very contemplative, introspective version of art. That's where I delve into all my deepest demons and I compress them and I look at them and I show them the boxes that I want them to go into versus them showing me which boxes they're gonna bust out of. And it's different, like with dolls, with the dolls that I just showed you, those are where my demons come out of the boxes. They just explode and they speak back and they freak out and they have many feelings and people oftentimes think my art dolls are extremely creepy because of this and that makes sense you know um as a person i've been working with children so long that part of my version of self-expression is through play though and so i think it's really important that i still have that aspect and then one of my favorite ways to interact or communicate in the world is to paint large scale is to work with materials and acrylic that works either like I often paint on my own body and I will paint on big canvases and big boards and things like that because that gives me the ability to step into the piece versus I don't know versus creating a world that is in the piece there are small small bits okay I can show you an illustration this is a copy of an illustration right and I'm learning tattooing currently and so this is a very sketchy version of Tattoo Flash. And it's a little fox, a little fennec fox. And it kind of expresses this like contemplative, outgoing, but like taking a moment for themselves little creature. And so that's best expressed in that like direct soft lines that are crisp and bold. And it just, it says what I'm saying versus, okay, hold on, here's another one. This is an illustration, this is done with watercolor and calligraphy, and it says, we turn towards our own destiny with every choice we make. 
and I completed it in 2015 and it's this little old lady that I kind of want to be when I'm older um and she's just she's vibrant and she's silly and she has my very typical bright eyes and two big eyes and bright cheeks you know that I do and it has the color and she's blowing out her candles and she's like 80 years old and her hair is dyed a funny color and she has a funny hat on and she has all these paintings behind her you know and so when I think about who I am as an artist I'm a painter like that's what I am but I'm also so much more because another thing is one of the things that I deal with is my own depression and my own trauma that has happened just from living in the world and if we're going to talk about trauma and art I would rather do it in a different video so we'll save that for another time but as an artist living in the world there's so much so much pressure to be what other people want to see and I think that we're so much more than that and so I know that for me I've tried to narrow my focus down to just painting and it never works I like to use photography to delve into the ways that I form relationships and connections with other people and landscape and essences of home you know and all of those things they translate specifically into photography and they allow me to deal with the fleeting aspects of memory and showcase what I actually remembered even though it was never there you know that whole like memory eyewitness thing it, it's not real your brain forms the closest to what it was as patterns in your brain and that's just a thing and so okay cool but we're supposed to view our memories as these true things and they're not they're not true and so photography allows me to like express what I actually saw that was true for me and so I could never get rid of it as well as photography and drawing have been the things that I've always been doing I've been doing photography and drawing and writing every day since I was 14 but as a writer I don't feel like I can express all of the things that I need to say like words are so literal and I write oftentimes how I speak I'm a little bit more poetic and more fluent and I have better vocabulary because there's time for editing right versus just off the cuff and I find it doesn't quite fit everything but then when I put it all together people get confused and so I don't know I'm still struggling a little bit with my own version of what I mean to myself but I'm really grateful to be an interdisciplinary artist and to have so many mediums at my fingertips that I have messed with and played with and have at least five years of experience in it, I feel like it contributes to who I am as an artist and who I am as a person and I think my life is richer for being it so I guess what I want to say to you is if you are an interdisciplinary artist or you're a mixed-media artist or you feel like you don't have a good focus you're not alone there are many of us out there and there's some of us that do it brilliantly and there's some of us who are a little more scattered with things but you're not alone and you're gonna find your path and it doesn't matter you don't have to be a focused artist to really express yourself so yeah thanks for watching um, this was my rant on being an interdisciplinary artist so we could call it a version of my mission statement uh, feel free to subscribe and I'll see you next week.